What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Seattle Seaman and here up at the trade deadline 37 19 and 6 deciding whether or not to make a move here and uh, improve our team and it looks like a lot of you guys had the same idea go for that Paton deal because uh, Paton looks real good so Let's uh, let's go entertain that thought. And uh, now I know Cody in the Discord was saying that, that is a good deal, but also keep keep an eye out for maybe center and a couple other people saying that Buffalo might be a good place to swoop on some people here. So let's keep an eye out. You know, Reinhardt also still good. Two years left on a five mil deal. Would he fit in? He would fit in on the top line and the power play line. 43 points in 62 games played and playing on that top line, so it says. I mean, he's playing with Eichel and probably Skinner. Look, they're looking to trade Skinner. Yeah, he's on the top line. I mean, you'd think they'd be getting more production as a line right there. That is a pretty, pretty damn good line. And that contract with two years left, he's already kind of done growing. Eh, that's okay. Now, going for a center option, middle stat's decent, but I still feel like with the draft capital we have, we could find, you know, a better option here. Or build one through our own system. Uh, build one up through our own system, I should say. You know, we got Sugal here. That's it, really. But, I mean, we should be able to find some more top, top six guys. And right now, Coil, he's, you know, built on stat growth, sure, buddy. He's up there. I mean, he could definitely fill in on a second line. We're playing him on the wing right now. 76 faceoffs isn't the greatest. Yeah, he is definitely more of a winger, but we could fit him in in a pinch. Obviously, we got Medvinov here who's looking like the uh, heir apparent for that first line center position. So, Sugal, maybe. Uh, Lowry, Fox, that these guys aren't really top six. So, yes, that, that second line center of the future role kind of still missing here. So, yeah, grabbing middle stat could be a good idea, but... I still want to kind of focus on trying to build build some guys through the draft. If we can't do it probably by this year, if we don't find it by this year, then obviously it's time for us to, you know, to try, try to sign someone or make a trade for you know the second second line center because we're starting to get all of our all of our main players up here. You know, Holtz is up in he's breaking in the NHL. Martin's breaking in the NHL. Koryuk's breaking in the NHL. These are all guys for the core here. And yes, we're missing another centerpiece. Um, yes, Sugal might be that, but there's no guarantee, and he might actually be a much better third-line center as he is. Because, my goodness, man. All those face-offs, again, not very good. He, he's only 71, though, so they, they, they could still actually get quite better. Um, as long, like, but he, I don't think this guy would be a second-line C position with those lower face-offs. So maybe chain him to winger again. See, so yeah, center is looking like we need it. I will if we don't find one in this next draft, then we'll obviously trade or draft for one. But I don't think it's necessary at this juncture where we're at right now. I think getting a rental player um, is what we do. And now I can't remember who made this comment, but it's a very good comment. Someone saying that, you know, agreeing that we should go for Paton, and, and the argument is this: we're not a. Uh, we're we're not we're not like an all-in team. This will help us contend, but it also we won't exactly mortgage our future for it. We have four firsts this year, so trading away a first, especially our own, probably isn't that big of a deal here. Or do we want to trade Boston's away? Let's actually see. Let's see how Boston. They're looking. They they're still like a really good team. They've they've made it to the Cup Finals all these last years, so it might be better to trade ours. Like how far are we? Or trade their pick. Like how, like, I don't think we'll be making the cup finals. Yeah, we have Freddie Anderson, but look at this team, man. Pasternak, 94, Marchand, Bergeron, that's their top line. They kind of fall off after that. Krejci looks like he's dropping off, but still is probably better than Heinen. That's three good centers right there. DeBrusque on that, on that line, they're probably filling some guys in over here on the wing. Bjork, I mean, this is still Kreider than they have. Look at that team. They're still so stacked. And defensively, obviously no Chara anymore. But still pretty good. Uh, they've dropped off a bit defensively, actually. How's the goaltending? Also dropping off goaltending. Hmm. Now, this isn't 100% accurate. Rask should be better than that. I think that trade value will go up. I think he should still be actually quite elite, or at least high up there. 
Let's actually check his play. I'm trying to see if we should trade their pick or our pick. At the end of the day, it probably won't matter. He actually has never done amazing in the playoffs. He kind of gets carried by the other team. And with weaker defense, maybe they won't make it as far. So, I don't know. Maybe we bet on ourselves and get rid of our pick. Let's, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not really going to, like, go crazy over... If, if I need the extra value, we'll obviously throw in um, that pick. But I don't think we will need the extra value for gra grabbing Paton here. We might, but I don't think so. Guaranteed 85. That might be a bit higher in value. But this this contract, yeah, it's three years. But this is an insanely good contract for an 85 overall guy. It really is. Now, question is, is, is that some stat growth in there? Doesn't look like it. He hasn't had any insanely good years. So he, I think he's just an 85 overall. And the great thing about Paton is fits in on our first line, fits in on our power play lines, fits in on our penalty killing lines. This guy would just fit in super well on this team. And that is, like I said, a really good contract. So let's try to grab Paton here. And the pieces we're putting back the other way, obviously. Byron, who doesn't really matter. He's 32. The contract is very similar, so I don't think we'll drop below. Hmm, we might drop below. Should I retain? It is an it's, it's only it's an extra year, but it's only maybe like one mil. I might actually retain just to help us out. I don't want to run into any cap issues here. I don't think I need to retain. But it would help the Leafs, and it would make this a little bit more realistic with some of the Oh, actually, they're not really in cap trouble right now. But they should be an elite team. How the hell are they not in cap trouble? Hold on. Well, they got Marner too. <laughs> Look at that deal for Marner. Bullshit, Snapple. <laughs> Unreal, dude. Cap and... Okay, they're going to have to re-sign Cap. Yeah, you know what? This would help them. Yeah, they'll have to have Byron for next year. But if we retain... Yeah. Because we're over... Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I'll make that. I'll, I'll give them a bit of help there. To keep their players... I don't know why I'm feeling generous, but I am. So again, I think we're going to bet on ourselves unless we need the Boston value. I don't think we will, but we might actually. This is very close. We are retaining. Maybe it helps push it across. It's only for one extra year. Again, we're not. I don't think we're going to be spending an extra 20 mil by next year. That's just not going to be a thing. So let's see. I think we might need that Boston value here. Trade rejection value just isn't there whatsoever. Yeah, I think we're going to need that Boston value. So let's throw in the Boston pick and keep our own. And see what they say to that. Ooh, still. Okay, let's use Trade Finder and see what they want for Paton. Because they don't want that. He might have more value than I'm uh, anticipating right there. So let's see what it would take to grab Paton. I, really, I think Paton is absolutely brilliant, though, for this team. All right, so find trade. Open. Ooh. Even, they don't want to trade this guy. It says no trades found. They really, interesting. Huh. Man, this, well, this is, honestly, now I really want him. All right, how do we make this go through? How close do I need to get this? Do I need to throw in a prospect? I don't want to sell the farm, obviously, for, for this guy. But he fits in really well. And he's at least a really good spot filler for a couple years. Especially fitting into our scheme as well as he does. Interesting. Do I have to go up? I Again, I, I want to throw in... Um, I still want to throw Byron in here. I don't need him. Well, I can still retain to help them out. And help ourselves out, keeping a bit of cap. Keeping ourselves above the cap floor here towards the end, but... Man, they really want a lot here. I could do the St. Louis pick. Again, we we have plenty of draft capital. And this pick, where it's looking like it'll end up, it's closer to around the middle. It'll be a top six anyway. We might want to capitalize on the value, but that's a big jump up in value. It is. It's quite a big jump. Quite a big leap there. We could throw in a future first of our own, where we think we'll be good by. And that won't be any real, real skin off my, off my back. But let's see what else we got first. Any prospects we just don't need. I don't think goalies... Yeah, we need the elite. Fringe starter, that's not enough. If it was NHL 19 fringe starter value, it would be more worth taking a look at. But yeah, if we're going by value here, anyone around this area that we might not need. These guys. Gundler, weaker. 66 at 20. 2 way forward. 53 at 18, we want that. 
This guy's growing really well. This guy, okay, Patrick, he can go. We don't, yeah, that's the season. He's not going anywhere. Throw him in there. What do they say to this now? Just not up to snuff. Doesn't match the block. Holy hell. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Okay, keep Patrick in there. What else can we throw in to make this more appealing? Top 6D guy. That guy can probably go in there. 61 and 19. Righty, yes. Defensive defenseman, yes. But top six guys are dime a dozen. So let's throw him in there as well. Give him a couple prospects unsigned. No, they're not. Ah, we're not even getting close to this. Really not even getting close here. So let's hold off on him for another deal. I guess we could throw in another first from another year. Or throw in a second. But they don't want anything like that. They want the later picks, sure. But let's say we predict. Uh, where are we going to predict we're good by? 26? Probably. Probably even later. But let's say 26. <laughs> Would that go through? Yeah, that'll go through. That's fine. I'm okay with giving away two picks. We're getting three years out of the guys minimum. And by that point, we should be pretty dominant in the NHL. So, whatever. We'll give away some of our draft capital. We have plenty. We can always gain more by that point probably as well. So, let's just fill in Paton here. And probably get some boosts. Oh, it actually didn't give it. Oh, really? I was uh, really expecting us to get a boost to that line overall wise. Guess not. Any boost? No? Okay, whatever. He's still, it's still, again, he's still really good. Fits into that line. And it said it would fit in on the power plays and things like that. Where is he on the power play right now? Not on that top line. Not on any line. Okay, Foxa is on the power play. We need a center. So we could drop Felino back to play center here. Put Paton on the point. Load up that top unit. I know it said he'd fit on all the power play lines. It does give us a plus one. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Uh, plus one here as well. I like that idea. Yeah, I really like this. Lefty, righty. Get them on there one times here. Now, Paton is a playmaker. It might make more sense. Well, it doesn't make... Eh, I don't want to put Med... No, we'll keep we'll keep him there. That's fine. Send it over to Boots I have for the blasts. With that hard shot, I guess. <laughs> Alright, I think that's what we're going to do. It also said he'd fit in on penalty kills. But... I like our penalty kills. <laughs> so on the penalty kill, Felino is a friggin' 92. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so that'll do. That'll take care of that. Now I might want to trade in that top four and grab a pick. I didn't want to put him in that deal, but I think we can grab a, a nice pick. I can fill in the pick for that, like the twenty six, and make up for that. But we, might, I'll probably just want to pick right now. So let's do that, or a pick for next year. We, I think we have enough picks for this year. Let's probably spread out some of the wealth here. We don't have another third. It might be good to have a third. We got two fours. We have 11 picks for this year by the looks of it. Maybe grab another three here. I can get a three. Might be able to get a two from next year though. So let's see if anyone wants Patrick here. I, I, yeah, no, I could just do Crate Finder, but this is actually going to be a lot quicker. Anaheim wants him. Listed as a rebuilder, but they're doing good right now. Very interesting. Why are they doing so good? Who knows? They don't have a, they have a two from next year, but because they're listed as a rebuilder, that's higher value. And we don't think we're going to be able to get that, although they do want Patrick. No. Okay. Keep looking. Oh, Buffalo wants Patrick. Listen, as a hopeful, their second from next year should be a lot more obtainable here. That is that we should get. Yeah, we should get that for Patrick right there. Really? So close. All right. Maybe it has to be higher than a hopeful. And unfortunately, none of those guys that are higher than hopeful want the pick. Why is no one listed as contender? All I see are champions, hopefuls, and rebuilders. That is hilarious, actually. Let's go with Tampa Bay's because they continue to struggle. Or grab their second for this year since they're wanting to give it up. That might be too much, but they actually want to give it up. Let's see. I think that's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Okay, next year's. Next year's, and we'll call that a uh, deadline here. And again, might actually be able to get a later pick here. Let's try that. Maybe a six from this year? No, okay. Just get the second. I'll be fine with that. Oh, 
Does not match the trade block needs, but they like the value. Well, if you like the value so much, give me the pick. How about two-thirds, man? Come on. Just make this work. Hmm. Very weird. <laughs> I was totally expecting to get that second right there. Oh, well. Do a three and a four from next year. That'll easily go through. Maybe grab a seventh from this year, just for funsies. Just so we could see. There we go. A really good deal. Oh, whatever. That's a, you're not getting anything for that guy, so I'm, I'm actually robbing you blind. That guy, he's 20 years old and in his 50s. I don't know what you think he's going to turn into. It's top six max. All right, so there we go. That will be our trade deadline. So we're all set here. Couldn't grab that second. A little bit perturbed about that, but whatever. It's, it's like I said, that guy's not going anywhere. If we got a second, that'd be even more of a steal. But anyway. Time to finish this season off, get into the playoffs, and see how we're going to do. Patan now on that top line instead of Byron. We should be better, but we've seen what happens when we make our team better. See what happens to the Sims. So let's see. I'm not going to judge on this Dallas game unless we win. Then I'll be like, oh my god, yeah. But Dallas is a real good team here. We're going to see a lot of trades pumping up, aren't we? I don't know. That's just that. But we might see a couple more trades here before the deadline. It's simulating very slow here. Yep. Um, ooh, Bach, a prospect, a second, a third, two thirds. Um, and Dad and St. Louis gets Dadden off. They're really trying to make the playoffs here. Oh man, yeah, because they they're looking like they're struggling, and their pick had a lot of value. Ooh, here we go. Jordan Wheel on waivers. Do we want him for extra depth? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Nah. It's a, it feels like a defensive type player. I might have considered it, but no. All right, Fox is fully healed. He just had a minor injury. He's fine. He's playing through it. Big game against Dallas here. We beat them 4-1. to one. Good defensive game for us. Losing in a, in a shootout to Ottawa, but that's okay. Can we force St. Louis further down the standings, right? Johannes Johannesson is the most injured guy ever, which is it's hilarious because I get to see his name pop up, but it also sucks because, well... <laughs> I like him. Get Breezebois in there. Come on. All right, we beat them. They get a point out of it, but we beat them. And then we win again, then we win again, then we lose in reg there to Winnipeg. But overall, we're doing pretty good. Okay, a couple losses in a row right there. Not exactly what you wanted to see. But again, still still doing good. Okay, we should have a guaranteed playoff berth, unless we completely tank here, which we shouldn't. We pretty much should have a guaranteed playoff berth. There we go. I think that was a win right there. Let's check the draft class. All right, Volshenko. I don't have Denny scout. He's being. I can't get any information because he's being scouted on his own. But there's, <laughs> if, we get, if we get lucky with that top pick, we might get Volshenko. I know someone was angry that I have maybe yet another top pick, but I grabbed that pick when that pick was low value, so I didn't expect it to go up that much. I didn't think Columbus was going to be that bad. But here's another playmaker here. He might be. Oh my goodness, he has A for defense, so he probably has good face-offs. I mean, a bunch of left-wingers here. We could probably turn one of them into a center, depending on what pick we get. So there you have it. Two-way defenseman here at the eighth slot. If St. Louis misses the playoffs, we might bounce up to here. But they're pretty close in there, so they'd have to really be bad. And we just saw him pick up Dadnoff, so I don't think we'll be able to snag that guy. But that would be a really, really awesome pick right there. Two-year NHL ETA. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's get some scouting done here. Couple, of elite, three elite goalies we have scouted. Holy hell! Well, we can really hedge our bets in the goaltending department. Goodness gracious! That guy's good. Look at that athletic category. So if we were to grab one of them, Nylander's the guy. Look at that athletic category. He's definitely going to be the best overall. Now he is 18, but what if he's a higher? What if he's about to turn 19? That might be why he's higher overall. But man, he is really the best one at all these. Liam Nylander. All right, anyone we want to scout here? Yeah, this guy would be worth it. We have a couple seconds. Some of them should be early. Well, I don't know if they are actually, but we'll have a late first at least. 
Oh, he's being scattered. Right, that should do it for the potential medium elites here. It's a lot of them. <laughs> Low elite and a gem. 19. Five-year NHL ETA. He's listed as a gem, though, so usually they tend to grow pretty well. So, at least that was the case last year. So grab that. Scout. Being scouted. Get some more low elites here if we can. If not, so be it. But we got a lot better scouts now. I'm still going to go on some of these guys. At least get more scouting information. Okay, a bunch of top sixes here. None out of the or none in crazy locations. These guys are worth scouting because they could jump up. You never know. Probably not, but they could. It's always a possibility. All right, one more here. That'll be it. And then we'll scroll down, see if any uh, low top sixes with like one tick off might jump up to a low lead again. This guy might. Ben DeHaan. They're all being scouted, essentially. All right, we'll do that guy, and that'll do it. That'll do it for now. All right, confirm that. Let's go. That's a good good amount of uh, assignments. Yes, we did beat Carolina there. We lose there, but we answer back with a win. So some back and forth here, but still doing pretty good. The Lightning have fired their coach. Yeah, Lightning keeps struggling, man. 45, 22, and 7, though. Here we are. Ah, lose against Nashville. You got to beat them. Okay, then we shut out LA. That's better. Um, Siegenthaler's been injured. That is unfortunate. April 20th. He's going to miss some playoff time. Yes, he is. But we can put in Breezebaugh to play with Johannesson, although they might actually struggle together. It was a plus five before. No, they're getting a plus three. Holy hell. Or no, it was a plus three before, yeah. Breezebaugh filling in there is like the best guy to fill in his depth. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Philly's a great team. You saw that record. Holy hell. All right, big win right there. Let's. Can we get 50? No, we can't because we lose to San Jose. Come on, force them further down. Damn it, we lost two games. Stop simulation. Stop simulation. Damn, oh, well. well we ended our record with a something. <laughs> I skipped it, but we'll see in a sec. Uh, 48, 27, and 7. Not bad. Not too bad. Especially considering how young we are. Oh, Medvedev didn't hit 70. Oof. Got some drop off there, scoring wise, at the end by the looks of it. 3.06 goals for per game. Yeah, we need to get that up there. 2.68 goals against, though. Real good goals against. Power play. That's not good. We need to get that up higher. Penalty kill. Decent. Uh, not amazing. I was thinking it'd be higher with how many pluses we're getting. Yeah, five and five at the end of the year. Not exactly the end we wanted. But what can you do? Home and away records, pretty even. More OT losses on the road there. More wins at home ice. Let's see how we stacked up to the rest of the league here. God, Philly. Look at that record. Yikes. They are strong. Oh, man. Look at their scoring, too. Goals four per game. Yeah, we are. We need to get those goals for up. We are middle of the pack, trending towards the bottom here, actually. Goals against, on the other hand, tied for first. So we have real good defense, man. Just imagine if we can get that scoring going. Real good shape. Real good shape. Power play. Let's see where we're at. Probably middle of the pack again. So, yeah, it's it's our offense that's kind of lacking right now. Everything about our offense is lacking. Yeah, here we are, middle of, actually, sort of, not bottom feeders, but towards the bottom here of the pack. Hmm. Penalty kill. Up there, top 10. Yeah. 15 shorthanded goals for Dallas. Do you see that? 15 shorties for Dallas. That is freaky. I have literally never seen that many shorties. 15 for them, 10. Oh my gosh. That is a lot. Wow. Okay. <laughs> a little scary right there. Medvinov, though, 67 points as a second year player, as a sophomore year, sophomore season. 30 goal score. He that's this is a breakout year for him. 67 points for him, 67 points for Cole, 20 goal score, 40 assists, man. Shiri almost with 50 assists, 64 points. Felina with 56. Paton had 53, he ended up with. Minus 16. Huh. Oh my god, Holtz. Holtz almost had 30 goals. And he's a 52 point guy. Yes, he's got power play time, but still, this is an impressive amount of points. He had 40 points on his own. And still over 20 goals on five on five. So. 
I'm liking Holtz. Perron, only 52 points, but he was a 20-goal scorer, so give it up. Lowry with 46 points. That's good. Really solid pickup. Might have to get him back. Yeah, we're paying him a lot. That was just to get him. But I, he's a pretty damn effective player, turning out. Uh, Foxa, 38 points. Uh, Kraus with 30. Bootsaya with 30 back there on the point. Let's just stick with Fords for now. Come on. Uh, Koroluk, 23 and 59. Martin, 20 and 59. 12-goal season for Koroluk. They're both plus players. That's what you like to see, though. That's what I'm really excited about. Both of them plus players. Ooh, Mikhail Koroluk jumped up to an 81. Hell yeah. Says he's ready for third line, but again, we got Holtz in that spot right now, I think. So I'd probably leave him where he is. Yeah. Yeah, probably. It's playoff time, man. <laughs> Ennis only got three games as a depth guy. Defensively, Boots have got the most points on the team with 30, playing in the top six. All right, well, now we've started. Yeah. I think I just got to bump him up for the playoffs here. Yes, we're playing well with what we have, but we can get way more out of him, I think. He's probably, yeah, he's, he's really starting to lose morale because of that ice time. So, yeah, I, I have to bump him up. I want, <laughs> wanted to experiment with the same lines there with after getting Paton, but I think at this point I have to play him up. I mean, he's 87. He's grow I, The fact is he kept growing there, so... There's a lot of reasons why I didn't move him up. It seemed our combinations were working, but when you look at that, the top, top four right now, there's still plus minus wise a lot to be desired. We're not blowing him away. Petrie Flurry, great, great combination. I know people are saying to trade Flurry because he's still got value, but I think we have enough draft capital that it's, we don't need to capitalize on every single thing of value. Yeah, he's probably not going to grow more, but honestly, I can see this guy being effective in the top six when we get our defensive core to a really good point. And, well, him and Petrie together did insanely well. So I'm, I'm happy for that. We got Petrie for a couple more years, or at least one more, I think. Uh, Goaltender-wise, Freddie Anderson, 40 wins, 7 shutouts. Those are great stats. Comrie, on the other hand, only got 18 points in 24 games played. Off year for Comrie. This is his contract year as well. I think he's out of here. But I, I wanted to hold on to him in case An Anderson gets injured in the playoffs. So, yeah. Like, likely likely out of here. Letting him go to free agency. We still have Brassois. Well, Brassois will be off contract, too. We could pick him up. For just filling his backup. I don't think our, our young goalies are quite ready yet. Holtz, man, he might actually have a shot at the Calder, depending on the the other uh, the competition here. But imagine that. Holtz getting the Calder, playing on the third line with power play time. That would be impressive. All right, let's see. Let's see, um, just on our team, if we have uh, any tough guys. Coral Uke fought five times. Shanahan fought a couple times. Coyle fought. Martin fought. People standing up for each other. All right, I like you like to see it. Oops, didn't want to do that. Let me go back and sort by points now and then go to the league. All righty, let's see the tops of the league here. Holy hell, that's more like it. McDavid, 121 point year, 55 goals, 66 assists. Absolutely. And then Dreisaitl with 112 point year. So the duo got the job done. Sagan with 104 points, 50 goal scorer. Kane, 50 goal scorer, 104 points. Pasternak, 104 points, 65 assists. Larkin with 100 points. That is a lot of 100 point scores. You like to see it. All right, goal leader. Ovechkin with 59 at age 36, still taking home that Maurice Richard. Assist leader. I'm still on all skaters. Let's stick to forwards. Looks like that would be Dreisaitl, huh? 7-3 assists for Dreisaitl, 71 for Backstrom. Good gracious. Plus minus leaders. Sagan with plus 39. Kane, then Kessel. Rontanen. O'Reilly, all right. Let's check shooting percentages out. Um, Ovi. Yeah, still Ovi. Good gracious. All right, who's the most clutch here? Kessel, you say Kessel's the most clutch. Almost one out of five of his goals. Actually, Shen, um, um, just over one out of three of his goals were uh, game winners. Braden Shen. All right, power play goal leader. McDavid with 20. Power play point totals. Pasternak with 38 points on the power play. That is a crazy amount. Shorthanded goal leaders is going to be someone from Dallas. Yeah, Rupe Hintz with six shorties. <laughs> and shorthanded point lead will probably Rupe. No! Oh, Miko, Dude, that Dallas penalty kill is scary. <laughs> Seven shorthanded points for Miko Koivu. 
craziness. All right, defensive stats here. Uh, Kopitar, ooh, he's making a run. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be Kopitar. That's too close. That's too close. He's got way better ratio. Less hits, more block shots. Uh oh, you better have a really good plus minus, or they're just gonna give it to. Oh fuck! I think it's going to O'Reilly again. <laughs> I think O'Reilly's getting that selkie once again. Looks like it. Yep. <laughs> then rip the dream. All right, defenseman. Klingberg leading in points with 87. Petrangelo with 81. OEL with 80. Luck. Two, well, one point per game guy. Two very close to point per game. Three, well, actually, three very close. And then Haskinen comes in. But yikes. Klingberg, Haskinen, look at that production. Whew. That is a lot of production there. Who's likely to win that Norris? I'd say Klingberg's got to be the front runner. It's got great points, great plus minus. That's what the game loves. Time on ice. The only one who beats him out is Haskin. And, well, no, no, sorry. Petrangelo beats him out, but he doesn't really have a chance with the plus minus. Oh. Haskinen might actually make a case for himself. But so could OEL if he's got... Yeah, he's got a decent plus minus, man. Because he's got more... Uh, more hits, the less block shots. Ratio, it's always tr crappy ratios for defensemen. But actually, OEL has the best ratio. Yeah, it's close between him and Klingberg. I don't even know. All right, let's go to goalies though. That's gonna be a tight race for the Norris. Oh wow, I, th I was thinking Carter Hart would blow everyone away here, but it doesn't look like it actually. His stats aren't insanely good. Let's go to 60 games played. Lukanen. Lunkfist, you gotta say they're right together. Ooh, and then he also oh my goodness. Uh Freddie Anderson. I mean, yeah. Like the save percentage, very close to the top here, and he's got a better goals against than anyone. You can make a case for Lunkfist. He wasn't on by the looks of it a great team, and he's 40 years old. You can maybe make a case for him tying with Freddie Anderson. Let's see, four less games played and eight less goals, so. Ugh, this is a tough call, man. But Fred Anderson way up there, I mean. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, no, no. Let's, let's, yeah, let's get, yeah. I, Freddie Anderson, holy hell. He did outstanding for us. What a, what a free agency pickup this turned into. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Freddie Anderson. Maybe you could give a shout out to a tie for Lunkfist just because he did it at age freaking 40. <laughs> so, all right. If I'm going to give it a tie, I'm giving it to Lunkfist and Anderson. But Anderson, what a tremendous. Let's see if anyone with like 59 games would have put their name in the hat here. 58 for Ranta, but no. Yeah, I think you got to give that to Anderson and Lungfist. Impressive. Very impressive. Let's go back to there. And rookie skaters here. New no. Holtz in second, but holy hell. Jimmy Giftopoulos, a 48-goal season, 17 assists. What the hell? He's only 83. How the fuck did he score that much? Oh, he's got a tremendous shot. He was, draft he was a 2020 draft. How is he a rookie? Oh, he must have, like, yeah, he's fourth overall, so they must have not played him in the NHL and then put him on the team this year. Jesus. I'm so sorry, Holtz, but you got hit with the cheese right there. 48 goal scorer rookie. <laughs> Jimmy Giftopoulos. Only 17 assists, but he had 65 points. That is a crazy, those are just crazy numbers. What the F? Damn it. Poor, poor Holtz. Poor Holtz. Oh, well. Rookie goalies, I just want to see if anyone was any good. Lukanen was... Oh, yeah, Lukanen. Now, obviously, he's not going to win that Calder because they didn't ever give it to goaltenders, and I wouldn't. But he's got to be in the conversation, at least. But, yeah, with that Giftopolis guy, that's cheesy. They never give it to goalies, though, unfortunately. All right, fun stats, and then we'll move on to the playoffs here. Come on, 200 hitters, let's go. Multiple this time. Yay, multiple! Casperi Kapanen, seriously? <laughs> Kasperi Kavanaugh with 202 hits, but TMO time, 210 hits, that makes sense. And Brendan Gallagher, 202 hits. You like to see it, and fights. Any major fighter still. Kyle Clifford still in the NHL with 17. There's uh, Jake Dotchin with 16. And then our guys, Coral Yuk. 
Coral Cup there with five, but yeah, only Cassie only fought three times. Seriously, how many games did he have? He had 82. Weird. Uh, must be watching out for his health then, I guess. All right, there we have it. Moving on to the playoffs here, taking on VGK in the first round. So let's see what they got to offer us here. And we'll see if Paton can really help us out. I hope he can. March or so, Carlson, Stone, top line. Pacioretty, Zarnik. They gotta have glass. That's gotta be wrong. Yeah, they can't. That's got those. Yeah, her scouts must have that wrong. They gotta have glass up there. Yeah, there's no way. Although, no, that was playoffs last year. Where did he play here? Only 39 points, so maybe not. Hey, it also. Ugh, I don't know. And Tuck. It's a pretty good offensive core. Yeah, pretty deep. Uh, Schmidt, you know, he's at least mid 80s. Tanev, still mid 80s. Not a great defensive core. They picked up McCabe, though. And they should still have, yeah, they still got Flurry, but we don't know how good he is, actually. Barube. Let's check scratches, because I think our scouts might have bad information here. No, Ryan Murray, he's got to be in there. Two defensemen, yeah, okay. So our line's got to be wrong, but we see what they got. They still got a pretty effective first line. I think our second line could get some mean mismatches here, especially if they're if they're really playing this guy here. Even if they're playing Glass there. Yo, he is a 2A4, damn. I hope they're playing Zarnik there. And they might be because of chemistry or something like that, but Riley Smith's a sniper. Pacioretty is also a sniper. And they have a playmaker here. So not really a defensive line. Our, sec our second line could get some mismatches and shut them down with uh, O'Reilly there. I like it. I like it. Hopefully our chemistries really help us out in this series. Only one way to find out. Freddie Anderson, we need you here. We need you to be Freddie Anderson in the playoffs. Except game seven. Let's go. Here we go. We should have... Do we have the home ice? Yes, we do. Home ice advantage against Vegas. Game one. Let's see what's going to happen. We got to get that goal scoring up there, but lock it down defensively. Oh, my goodness. A 6-3 to three loss. That is not what you want to see. We allowed the goals. That's not what you want here, especially on home ice. Game two. Even this series back up, Seattle. Come on now. No, my God. A 7-6 to six loss, and we can't keep the puck out of the net. Two, oh, my goodness. Again. Vegas, these one goal victories. What is happening to our defense? Holy hell, man. Yeah, we're getting the points. We're clearly scoring, but holy crap. Neither of our goalies look like they're doing good either. I mean, how could they be? Paton really dropped down to an 83 right now? That sucks. I really want this plus three. I mean, this line's doing good. Nothing to take away from them, but this line isn't. This top line, pretty much getting nothing. Well, Perron hasn't gotten anything. Oh, here we go. We could do that. Move him down. Move, but that's only Kraus. Moving that, that won't help. Holtz, that won't help. All right, you know what? Let's move. Oh, that one. No, that actually is a bit negative. But Coralyuk, he's got no points, sure. Oh, no, he doesn't have good, he doesn't have good awareness. I'm just trying to see if we could find any different combinations here to help, but not really appearing that way. And moving this top line up there doesn't actually really help because then our, I mean, they're only getting plus one now, but maybe with more ice time they can get the job done. I don't know. We got to do something here. Because really defensively we're getting our asses kicked, but I, I really like them getting plus three here, but... Maybe I do need to make that change. Just give him more ice time. And then maybe from here, that doesn't do anything. That does, I mean, but moving Paton down, I don't know about that. We'll give plus one there. Perron hasn't done anything. He's a minus, minus player as well. Krause has at least got a goal. It gives that line a plus one, but it's not that amazing. Yeah, I think I'll leave it like this. I'm losing plus three overall, sure, but we're getting we're getting beat on right now. So I didn't want to do this for the playoffs, but I'm gonna.
Let's move Shanahan and Boots Avenue to that top pairing. Dermot, Carlos stay there. Petrie and Flurry down here. I wanted to keep things as they were, but yeah. Oh my god. Horrible. Okay, well, I guess we're going to hand over the reins to Comrie here. Because Anderson has just been atrocious in these playoffs. So let's hand over to Comrie. And turn off goalie rotations. And hope that Comrie can do better than freaking Freddie Anderson. Jesus. After the season he has, that's what he does? I, that I, That is upsetting. That is extremely upsetting. We're handing it to Comrie, though. Oh, man. it's Really? Is it at the top? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I rotate goalies off. God damn. Really unfortunate, but he's at least played a bit better in what he's done. The, so, down two games to none. Got to storm back here. On the road in Vegas. Tough place to play. Game three. Come on, Seattle. Five to one loss. Nah, it's just... We're just getting beat. Just getting beat here. Can't can't get the puck in the net, and now we're not scoring. I guess I'll switch back the offense. At least we were scoring there. So I'll keep the defense how it is, because obviously that's not doing anything. And putting Comrie in there, he shit the bed. So apparently that's not working either. <laughs> let's just get the let's just get the high overall cheese and hope that that line can carry us, because we're not getting any help. Yeah, now Comrie's doing trash. Fuck it. Put Anderson back in. Comrie got his chance. Go with the man who got us here in this season. I don't know. We're just getting absolutely boned here in the playoffs. <laughs> Game four. Can we complete a fantastic turnaround? Probably not. No, we're out. Yeah, four to one. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Got swept by Vegas. Yikes, man. Just yikes. I'm really bummed that Baton dropped from an 85 to an 83, too. I guess he did have stat growth, but why would he have stat growth after, like, an 40-something point season, man? And he didn't... He had, like, a 50-something point season. He should have at least maintained it, you think? But, I don't know. Maybe he did just lose that. I don't know. That really sucks, though. Getting eliminated just like that. Our goalies really... I mean, the last two games, we didn't get the offense. But we should have won those first two games with the goals we scored. Three goals, four. Six goals, four. Look at those stats. Atrocious. Atrocious. Goaltending sucked. Yes, our defense wasn't great, but they were great all in the season. We tried to bump some dudes up, but just nothing worked, man. Nothing worked. N literally nothing worked. Petrie got some points. He was trying. I felt I feel bad putting him down there, but I had to do it for the plus overalls. We needed, I mean, I felt like we just needed to do that just to make us good. And it just didn't work out for us, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of it on the goaltending. I I mean, ha you saw what we did in the regular season, man. I I don't think we should have shit the bed that hard, but we did. So that's just how she goes sometimes. Got swept by Vegas, so rivalry developing with Vegas here. They beat us twice. I guess it's not much of a rivalry for them, but for us it is. We got to exercise our demons eventually against this team. We lost to them in our first year. Now we lose to them again, but get swept. Learning curve is steep right now. Yikes. Just yikes. Ugh, man, that is rough. <laughs> well, got to figure something out. We're only going to get better. That's the good news. We're only going to get better. So, you know what? I want to see if I did have things right. I want to check their lines again and see if, because we should have them now fully scouted. Because we just played them a bunch. Well, I guess still not fully scouted. Are you serious? What the fuck are my scouts doing? Yeah, Flurry's declining, man. But he did, he did fine. Carlson, six points. Oh, man, they killed us. Five points. That line killed us. <sighs> Eight points. Five points. Seriously? Eleven points in four games played? What? And five points on the power. Our penalty kill shit the bed. Just everything shit. Oh, God, that's just horrible. We just got crushed. They, their depth. Oh yeah, look at the points, man. Their, their depth just overwhelmed us. Ugh. Well, really regretting that trade for Paton just because he dropped down to 83. If he's an 85, fine, but that really sucks now. At least giving him that later pick. But whatever. We still got him for two more years. He'll still be effective. Or effective-ish. It still, it still kind of benefits us. We still have plenty of draft capital. But yeah. In hindsight now, the trade doesn't look as good, but whatever. We tried to contend, we got swept, so pfft. 
What can you do, man? What can you do? Draft up in the next episode. Hopefully, we get ourselves some good news. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you in the next one.